And the Lord spoke to me about three months ago and told me to add seats to the sanctuary. But, and I said, this is a moment of expansion. Somebody's lying. One of you are not telling the truth or maybe both of you are not telling the truth. So this is really funny, ridiculous and sad all at the same time. Now, we've shown some things that kind of showed that Keon Henderson is not really all that trustworthy. He's talking about what his church is in need of. We understand what happened with uh, with the hurricane and, and damage to his church. And he talks about how insurance they want to pay a depreciated value, all while in the same breath talking about how his church has appreciated in value, yet he still wants you to cover. He says the edifice is $20 million. The entire building wasn't destroyed. There was some water damage, electrical damage, and things like that. Whatever. We're not talking about paying $20 million, but he's asking for $4 million. I do have a solution, by the way. Just about 10 years ago, the property was worth $9.6 million. Through negotiations, we got it for 6.2. Amen. Amen. Since then, we built the Dream Center and we've rehabbed the building, got the building reappraised, the building reappraised for nearly $20 million. We owe $3 million on the original note, which means we have $17 million worth of equity in the building we've only had five years. I say that to let you know your offerings don't go towards my suits. You don't get $17 million in equity in five years if you're mishandling the money. For all of those who will say, don't worry about it, they've got insurance, they've obviously never filed an insurance claim before. Let me give you a lesson in insurance. If this iPad costs $400 new, and I've had it for 10 years, when the insurance adjuster shows up, he's going to give me the depreciated value of this iPad because it's the depreciated value that the insurance company makes their adjustment on, which means everything that we had in the building that was old, the insurance company wants to give us the depreciated value of that asset. So which one is it? It's just those little things, as well as him saying that uh, this was something that God did, but then also turn around and blaming the devil for it. But that's not really the issue here. The issue here is, remember, he stated that he want, they wanted to build this, this expansion all along. And then when this happened, he said, he said, God told him that God wants him to expand. And the Lord spoke to me about three months ago and told me to add seats to the sanctuary. And yet again, I believe God said, Keon, your faith was too small. So let me blow the building down so you can build what I put in your heart. I want to increase the size of our sanctuary by two. I want to double the size of it so that no one who has an opportunity to get in is turned away because we don't have a seat. God gave me a vision and he said we can do it in 21 days. The only problem is his mentor says something different. His mentor says, no, it wasn't God that told him. It was him. T.D. Jakes is saying that he was the one that told Keon to build, to expand. I was talking to somebody whose church was damaged in the flood, and I said, this is a moment of expansion. He said, expansion? I said, yes. God, I said, some kind of way God is going to use this turbulence to expand your territory. So the question is, which is it? Who's lying? Who's telling the truth? You both can't be telling the truth. Did God tell you to do so? Did you on your own determine to do so? Maybe you're blaming God, you're putting on God, you're saying God did so. Or did T.D. Jakes tell you to do so? Don't know. Now, again, don't have a problem with you expanding your church. Don't, have, don't even have a problem with you asking for it. Just be upfront and honest. But we're seeing you don't have the ability or the inclination to be honest. One of you guys is telling is telling the truth or one of you guys is lying or both you guys are lying. Doubtful God didn't have anything to do with this. And so... I'm going to have to say probably T.D. Jakes is telling the truth more so. Kind of odd to say that, but maybe you both are lying. Who knows? Who knows? What I do know is this. We're going to continue to make do what Paul says in, as he says in 2 Corinthians 11, 12. He says, for what I'm doing, I will continue to do in order to undermine the claims of those who like to claim that in their boasted ministry, they work on the same terms we do. They do not. We do not. We're not part of the same team. 
we don't go around and as a habit lying to build people or you can just be upfront and honest. Just tell people, hey, we want to do this. But if you really want to do something and if you're desperate to get back into your sanctuary and you're desperate to do so, that uh, appreciated value, that excess equity that you have in your church, well, do, do a short term loan off that. Clearly, you have demonstrated the ability to pay it back quicker. You've got income from uh, ties that you're asking for, offering and other different things, ways that you're swindling people. Do that. Do a short term loan. Do so in the meantime while you're waiting for the insurance. That works as well. Also, I don't know how desperate you are, but I think it's that to be something that you should do or consider before you decide to ask people for money who, by the way, they have issues too. We're talking about people in Houston, but other people as well. Or you know what? Again, just be honest. Or how about this? How about you do what you told that one lady to do? Hush. Silence. Silence in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir.